I wanted to ask you too, you know, just on your point of 99% of Georgia's games being blowouts, do you think obviously there's the uh, there's the conditioning factor in there, but do you think there's just a bit of a shock factor too when all of a sudden you're not dominating somebody and you, you're you getting pushed around or you get scored on and you find yourself, uh, you know, down in a game for the first time in a while? Yeah, I mean, the end of the first quarter, Georgia's up 10 to nothing. Uh, the, 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 the kids are probably thinking, okay, uh, we, we, we can handle this. You know, there it's like the, uh, the line from Rocky four or whatever, when, when Ivan Drago finally gets a cut on his eye or something. And because, you know, Georgia just has this mental hurdle with Alabama. They can't get over, but then, you know, in that first quarter to beat them 10, I said, okay. But in the second quarter, it just fell apart. I mean, it just, uh, you know, they outscored us 24 to nothing or whatever it was. We had three straight three and outs. They scored all three times. And before you know it, you're looking up to 24 to 10 or whatever it was and 24 to 17 at halftime. And then in the second half, the interceptions came. It was very similar to last year's game. I mean, the score was exactly the same uh, last year when we played Bama. Uh, Stetson played okay in the first half last year against Bama, and it fell apart in the second half. Last He had three interceptions last year in the second half. He had two this year, one of them being a pick six. You can't do that. You're not going to win big games turning the ball over twice and one of them is a pick six. And in the second quarter – you can't uh, talking about the defense being wore out. The offense, you go three and out three times in a row, that taxes your defense. So, you know, I, I agree the defense played bad, but some of that's on the offense for leaving them out on the field for the entire second quarter. Yep. And, and Jordan Battle dropped an early, what yes. probably should have been another pick six early yeah. in that in that first half. And I'm like, yeah. oh man, like that was that was a close one. Um yeah, so it, it is. It's definitely it, it's the complimentary football, and I and like you mentioned, I think that's what both teams want to do in this game is, is play that that complimentary football. Um, Lou, I'll, I'll ask you too. Um, it, as far as Georgia, if you had to, you know, guess as far as their mentality coming into the game, I, I would imagine they're either pissed off about you know how they 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 played against Bama. You know, I, I don't think anybody was expecting that or, or, you know, wanted that to happen or, or kind of like Justin said, do you feel like there's like kind of a shock? Like we kind of got to pick, pick it back up a little bit. Like, you, you know, obviously it's still a huge game that you're getting ready to play next week. Um, if you had to, you know, put your finger on it, like where, where do you think the, the Georgia players and coaches, their mentality is on, on this game next week? Yeah. Well, co coaches are master motivators and they, they'll use anything to try to motivate their their kids in the team um so i think i'm hoping anyway it'll be a similar situation to the week between the uh for uh, alabama's auburn and, and georgia game uh alabama looked horrible they were lucky to escape that game with a win everybody wrote them off oh my god they're terrible uh and then they came out and played their best game of the season uh I, so i'm hoping it's something similar to that um because I, I think this is going to be a good game. You know, I we, we there's been a lot of disappointing playoff games. Um, for college football fans who who aren't pulling for either Georgia or Michigan, I think you're going to get a good game here. Now, I've thought that before about some playoff games, and it didn't work out that way. What is it, Mark? 11 out of the 14 have been blowouts? That sounds about right. 2014 Alabama, Ohio State was a good one. Uh, the Oklahoma Georgia game, obviously, you know that one play by play, Lou. Uh, great game, OT 2017. And then what would be the other one? Oh, the, the, the Clemson Ohio State game was a classic yeah. a couple of years ago. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So Outside of that, they've all been blowouts. Pretty yeah. Much. Holy cow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. A couple uh, of a couple of uh goose eggs up there as well, right? Yeah, Michigan but State, Ohio, Ohio State. State. Yeah, yeah, 31 to yeah. nothing and 38 to nothing. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. And of course, Alabama uh has beaten Oklahoma pretty bad a couple of times. I think LSU beat Oklahoma pretty bad. Uh so yeah, a lot of blowouts in the in these first round uh playoff games. And as much as you know, I I respect Cincinnati, but if you're trying to pick the blowout. It's probably going to be that. <laughs> uh, I, I like Cincinnati, and look, Cincinnati's got a better secondary than Georgia. Cincinnati's got three NFL players in that secondary, and Desmond Ritter is a better quarterback than Stetson Bennett. Top to bottom, though, Georgia's better. But so you know, it's not that I don't think Cincinnati can compete. I do, but if you're trying to pinpoint, you know, one of these two games that is more likely to be a blowout, I think it's that one. 
Well, and I think too, the, you know, media companies and all that too agree with you because, you know, Michigan or uh, Michigan, Georgia has the prime time, you know, 730 game. And then, yeah. you know, that, that first round game, I think it's 230 or 330 pretty early on in the, in the day. So, I, I think the, uh, the the folks who schedule the games agree with you and think that uh, this will be the the better of the two games. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, obviously, I want Georgia to win. I'm I, I'm a, I don't hide that. I'm a Georgia fan, but as a college football fan, um, you know, I, I want to see good games when these playoffs come around. You know, and I think we'll get one. Georgia and Michigan, strength on strength. I mean. The, the the offensive and defensive lines of these teams are are both really really good. Quarterbacks kind of fall into that game manager category type of deal, but I think it's going to be a good game. So is this the deal with the two quarterbacks? You can pretty much throw them in a bucket, and they're the same guy, Cade McNamara, Stetson Bennett. Except McNamara doesn't make mistakes. Stetson Bennett. You talked about Alabama last year. You talked about uh, Lou the Alabama game this year. It seems like Stetson Bennett. You could take like 31 or 32 of his 35 pass attempts and you're good with it. It's like three times in each one of not just those games. Anytime they play a quality opponent, it seems like there's like three or four times he just makes a dumb. He just completely misreads something, doesn't see one, tries to force a throw and just brain freeze and does yeah. a stupid thing. He's Brett Favre without the upside. <laughs> you know, Brett Favre never saw a covered receiver ever in, in his 20 year right. career. He never saw a receiver that was covered ever. And that's why he leads the NFL all time in interceptions, but he's got a <laughs> few touchdowns too, you know. And uh, he scrambled around and did a lot of stuff outside of the pot, you know, when stuff would break down. Uh, and, and, and Stetson's kind of that way too. But when Stetson has to throw the ball, that's the, pro that's the problem. You know, uh, when 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 we're running the ball effectively and he can he can play action on first and 10, he's a he's a pretty good college quarterback. He's good enough. Uh, but when you need a quarterback to do something for you, that's where he really has a problem. Uh, well, when, when the other team knows he has to throw the ball. That's that's a problem. 